Yo, I wanted to set this next clip up. Um, I had some time off, so I was going through some old footage from Creative South. If you don't know about Creative South, Creative South is like a five-day event for designers, illustrators, entrepreneurs in that creative space. So I met this young man named John, and me and John had an interesting conversation backstage about abusive teachers and how to overcome that. And I kind of talked about some things that I never touched on before. So I felt like this was kind of interesting. So check it out. Cool. So tell me about it. Tell me what you were saying. Yeah, like downtown, like here? Yeah, it didn't look nothing like this. You didn't see nothing but like me and you down here. Yeah. You know, um, they used to call it Kimpo School. Back, back then, like all the shops and stores and everything were black home, black business. Yeah. How now, 24. Okay. But now it's just all, you know, gentrified. Yeah. You, know, you see, they pushing all the all the old businesses out. Yeah. So there's maybe two or three shops around that's still you know, black on. Yeah. That's cool. So you're a designer and all that stuff you was talking about. Um, what about the school system and all of that stuff down here? Yeah. I mean, it's about the same about where you at. I remember when I was in fifth grade, I had this teacher that told me I never make it to college. And I struggled in, in grade school, but in college I'm doing better than I did in grade school. Yeah, so yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and it follow you true too, man. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna talk about this, but I didn't. And uh, in the fifth grade, I shitted on myself. <laughs> <laughs> so so what's crazy about it is that I raised my hand. I was like, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. I need to go to the bathroom. She like, no, 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 my stomach rumbling, and bruh, it was one of the traumatic, I'm in the fifth, I already fucked the second. It was so traumatic that I couldn't, she didn't clean me up, she didn't fix me, she let me sit in that shit all day long. And my mother was like, flipped out. She said, don't ever let them tell you. If you gotta use the bathroom, I don't care who. And this was like the most liberating thing that, it, that, that happened to me at the point. Cause it was finally, my mother was telling me like, you could go against whatever they talking about for, for your own best interest. And I think the problem is, is that in second grade, we need to know this going in there. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nobody really telling us to get prepared to what we come into. You know what I'm saying? Like if you, if you study the art of war, if you know your enemy, then you know how to move. So it's okay to say, look, son, you may be dealing with some racist issues. You may not get the grades. So now you know how to navigate, bro. You already know what angle they coming from. You see what I'm saying? So uh, it's, it's a different situation then. Because now you've got these other voices telling you, like, you're you good. You, you, you're on the right path. Fuck what they talking about. You go do you. It's all about you. Remember what I told like, I don't know if I really hit home enough on the fact that compliance, bro. They want us in line, they want us to be mediocre, they want us to follow instructions. This was very practical. This is the factory mindset. The school system hasn't changed. They're always in that same mode. I think it's 2018. That factory mindset is over. They need some people that's indispensable. That daredevil that I was talking about, that's the real you. The thing what what I think about when I, I was talking about my father, but I don't know if I really pondered on it, is that he worked. And after he worked, he just came home, you know, and he kind of just relaxed and chilled and just listened to his music, got a little beer and all of that stuff. But I ain't never really seen him drawing. <clears throat> I ain't really see him doing like poetry. He was doing some photography, but I knew he had those skills and hobbies. But it's like, we don't know how to like break that connection of being a worker, being that Murdoch, and now really bringing that daredevil up. The school gonna have you locked in that too. Like, we need your portfolio, we need this, we need that. You're not gonna really be doing your real you. Like, like your portfolio stuff is to you to get that school, get a job. It's not gonna be like art gallery stuff. You know what I mean? John, John. So we're coming out to the latest spot to see John's work, and this is what's gonna get you on Creative South, the real you, man. So you gotta find out who that is. And this is the thing, too, man. This is the whole thing about the status quo, falling in line to these instructions is that 
being a linchpin, what I was talking about with the Zeph Gold, the linchpin is a risk taker. It's scary, bro, because everybody wants to fall in line, and this person is the most powerful person. Bro. You want to go with the crowd, it's easy, it's safe.